people were being told uh, pretty much FanDuel draft game, 161, 161 and a half. Yeah, it's definitely a factor that you got to look at him when you're talking with the team Alabama, uh, is Steve alluded to, and, you know, he talked about being a little bit bitter. Um, I was bitter at the start of the Alabama Clemson game because I had Alabama and Alabama, they live and die by the three. And you want to talk about starting a game slow. You couldn't have started it any colder than they did. They were one of 13 from three point range. And for a team that's going to live and die by the three, that's not what you want to see. But as you saw, they heated up very quickly. They went on to hit, the 15 of their next 23 to finish the game. And that's what gave them the victory over Clemson. Now here's the dilemma <laughs> that was against Clemson, not the Clemson's a horrible defensive team, but they're not Connecticut. Okay. UConn is, you know, absolutely shut down defense. And if Alabama struggles early on, uh, they could find themselves, you know, run out of the building early. Uh, and the problem with shooting threes is when you're behind, that rim and that hoop mm. looks a lot smaller than when you're shooting threes with the lead. Uh, and that's where the problem can come in. And as Steve said, he looks at Connecticut. It's either Connecticut or pass for him. And, yeah, you're laying a premium with Connecticut, but how can you not? This is a team that we are talking about epic proportions. The last team that I've seen a two-year domination in college basketball, the way we've seen with the UConn team, you got to go all the way back to me, to the, the 89-90 UNLV teams, where you've seen uh, two seasons put together like Connecticut has done. They do it on both sides of the court. You know, we know that they can score. They're a great foul shooting team. They hit 74% of their foul shots, which is key when you're laying points. Uh, because they're going to get fouled. They're going to have the lead mm. late in the game. Well, if you're making your foul shots, uh, you're going to extend the lead. Then when you turn around and you run back down the other side of the court where the team's got to chuck up threes to try to get back in the game and you're one of the best defensive teams in the country, yeah, that's not going to work. That's how those leads keep growing for this Connecticut team and why they keep covering. Uh, the team has won 11 in a row and they're 10-1 and one against the spread. And the only team that was able to cover against them was St. John's in the Big East tournament. You know, a team that, you know, knows them well. They face them, you know, twice a year, sometimes three times. Um, and they were able to sneak in under the number. I like this Alabama team. I actually did have Alabama making the final four in my bracket. Unfortunately for me, I hit three of the four teams in my bracket. <laughs> the problem is the one I missed is the one I had winning it. So <laughs> that kills that for me. But uh, I think Alabama, you know, if they hit the threes, they can hang around for a while. But I just I can't step in front of this UConn team. And if you want to talk at the team totals, uh, again, this would be one where I would look at the first half because come second half, if you're dealing with the over, you're going to be having Connecticut at the foul line and you're going to have Alabama shooting threes. Uh, and if mm -hmm. they hit any of those threes late and Connecticut's making those uh, foul shots, you are you can have that final minute and a half, just a lot of garbage points adding up to the total. So I like the first half. I hate to steal that page out of your book, Joe, but in these situations, mm -hmm. I think the first half wagers are better for the totals if you're looking at the under. Totally different story if you're looking at the over. 